Welcome to Healthy Cooking with Chef Jeff today. Today we'll be doing a recipe called vegetable chowder and it consists of a lot of fresh vegetables. I got a few of them right here in front of me. Um, since the weather's been kind of terrible in rain and ice and cold air and snow and all that kind of stuff, winter's living up to be in winter for a change and not a mild winter. Uh, so I figured I'd do a soup, a chowder. Uh, all chowders, most people in this region think that you gotta have potatoes in your chowder, but you really don't have to have potatoes in your chowder. Uh, a chowder is a heavy stew-like soup. Uh, that's what a chowder is. And all the vegetables I have today in today's recipe, I have a few right here. I'm gonna put a few zucchini in there, carrot, celery, onion. I'm using a red onion, because when a red onion come to heat, it kind of changed the flavor. It's a little bit better, not as strong as a yellow onion. Uh, also, I have what we call garbanzo beans. Some people call them chickpeas. I have whole kernel corn, yellow whole kernel corn. And I have some tomatoes, diced tomatoes in juice. These are canned, by the way. And as you know, as I like to use fresh stuff, you can substitute that with fresh t tomatoes as, as well. Uh, my recipe calls for dry basil, but here I have fresh basil. It's a lot more stronger and more vibrant flavor to it. And I also have garlic and oil, black pepper. The oil I'm using is a uh, canola oil. I always like to use canola oil even though the recipe calls for a different oil. As long as you use a vegetable oil, something that's healthy for you, um, even an olive oil, you can even use that. That may add, the flavor, add to the flavor of the chowder, um, which will be good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on it. The first thing I'm gonna do is, like I always do, heat up my saucepan. I also have, of course, wooden spoon. I never use a metal spoon in a saucepan. Reason why is metal on metal. It kind of gives it a bad flavor. It's like putting vinegar in a pan and then tasting the vinegar. It leaves a bad aftertaste. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Getting some things heated up. Y'all excited about today's uh, recipe? Yes. Good, good. I figured something simple like that would be good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I got a good crowd today. I see a lot of Auburn fans and Georgia fans and Georgia Tech fans and all those and, and Alabama fans. Yeah, but we got we got them all throughout the southeast and even some Golden Bears in here. Yeah, I can't. I mentioned the Golden Bears, you know. I didn't forget. I didn't forget. But. Yeah, well, those Tar Heels too. They did great, especially in the in, in basketball. They they doing great. I think they ranked number 14 so far. They came a long way this year, and they got a lot of young players on that team. I'm quite sure I probably got some Kentucky Wildcats in here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they seem to be tame right about now, which is good. Well, we can't do that around here. We can't serve bourbon around here. This is not the crowd for that. <laughs> be surprised with this crowd. Well, I, I, you're, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get started in slicing my onion. And you may notice I use the round, the, the round part of the onion because uh, I'm going to cut it in quarters to get the slices kind of thin there. And put it on in there. You can hear that sizzle. I know a lot of people out there in TV land and they watch the show like to hear stuff like that. You know, and I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't realize the sizzle. I guess that's to make it sound like it's real, which it is real. 
And I'm cutting the carrots thin on a bias, like so. Reason why I'm doing that, so when I cook it in the soup, in the, in the chowder, it'll cook evenly and it'll be tender. And it won't turn to mush and all that kind of stuff. And we don't want to serve mush. Well, then it'll be goulash. Yep. And we like our European friends and they, they come up with goulash and you know, goulash is good. I remember when I first tasted that, I was like, what the world is goulash? But, and you know, I, I, I like it. It's been a while since I had some, but I like it. Get those carrots going. And you notice I put the carrots in there right along with the onions. Because the carrots are a hard vegetable. And those type vegetables there need a little bit more time to cook than the... Uh, than the zucchini and stuff like that, and the celery. And I'm also cutting the celery similar to the carrots. So when you pick it up on your spoon, you're not fighting it, trying to, trying to eat with it. I got my flame too high, better calm that thing down a little bit. Cause you're Don't want anything to happen while I'm doing the show. Mm -hmm. And some people, you know, I, I worked with some chefs in the past that when they're doing demonstrations and stuff like this, they would be cutting and looking at the camera at the same time. I'm be honest, I can't do that. Because I'm afraid of cutting myself and I don't want to be bleeding on TV. You know? and, and I like my fingers. I don't know about those guys, but I like my eyes because they come in very handy, for, at least for me. You know, I can't wait to taste this soup, this chowder, because I have had it before. I was actually introduced to it through some friends. They had it at their house, and all we had was uh, this and a, and a biscuit. That's all we had. And that, that right there, something simple, was the best meal I had in a long time. I'm gonna take this pot off so you guys out here can see this and see what's going on in the pot. Cause even though the camera can see it, but you know, I'm gonna walk around here and show it to you guys. This is what it began to look like. That's this beginning stage. You see that? You can see that? See that? That's the beginning stages of it. You see how I cut the carrots and the and the celery and stuff? So like I said, it can fit on your spoon. Carrot, celery, and onion so far. So far. We'll get some more goodies in there. No. Yep. Yes, that's all in there right now. And now I'm gonna cut the zucchini. The zucchini, I'm, it's a large zucchini. I'm cutting it into quarters. And I'm also gonna cut it on a bias also. So that way it'll fit on that spoon. You know, nobody likes to It'll cook quicker as well, as well. You always saying you can't cook, but I believe you can cook. You do dishes good. Good. <laughs> well, I, I am short of dishwasher. I got a machine. We we have to have a great machine. Got to have good people to go with it. No, not that easy. 
That's a lot of work back there. Those guys, if it wasn't for the dishwasher, no, no restaurant, no hotel could survive. Actually, one of the most important positions there he is. Right. Now I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper. Stir these guys in. And black pepper and garlic. Let those guys, like I always said, when you add heat to stuff like black pepper and fresh herbs, the flavor really comes out. Now I'm going to take some of this fresh basil. Chop it up real fine. Can y'all smell that basil from here? I'm gonna walk around and let you smell it before I put it in a pot. All right, guys. We don't want you guys to, to get too done real, real fast. We want you to sweat in there. Now, I'm going to show you guys the, the fresh basil. Maybe you can smell it. Smell yeah. it? What is that? That's fresh basil. You smell it? Basil. Basil. You smell that? You can smell it. Mm. You can smell it? Like you good. smell it? Mm -hmm. You smell it, Miss Lee? Yeah. Yeah. You can smell it, Miss Lee? You smell it? Yeah. Now I'm going to set that right there. I always change my gloves. And we're going to add this basil. I want you guys to smell that so when it hit the heat, it's going to even react a little bit more stronger and you'll be able to taste it. I'd like to welcome a newcomer to the group. We don't get to see Ms. Newman that often to this event. And she's over there. All right, now I'm going to add the chickpeas. Let these guys pick up some of that flavor from the basil, salt, pepper, and carrots. I wish you guys could see this because it looked marvelous. Let me hold it down so maybe some of you can see it from there. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. That looks good. Yeah. Can y'all see that? We're beginning to come together. Yeah, I'm going to walk over there and let my newcomer see it. This is what we're making today. Oh, wow, that looks good. Yeah. Now I'm going to add the tomatoes to it. Oops. Because I'm mixing everything before I add the broth so it can pick up all that flavor, like I said. Little guys marinate together and have a good time. Corn. Beginning to look like a chowder now. Chowder is 
Right, that is correct. And that what what's going to make the soup thicken up is the chickpeas. The chickpeas has a lot of starch in it, and it'll bring everything together, as well as the corn. The corn also has a starch in it, of course. You guys know that. Uh, so that'll bring it. That'll give these the uh, chowder it body, just just as a potato would do. It gives it a body too when you're doing a chowder. So that's where your starch going to come in on that product. All right, and we're going to add the broth to it. Let it set and simmer and cook while it's doing that and come to a boil. Uh, we're going to come right back and we'll show you the finished product. Maybe I get a chance to taste some of this great stuff on there. Who knows, I may have a biscuit or some cornbread to eat with it. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Healthy Cooking with Chef Jeff today. Our audience uh, agree with me uh, on the uh, chowder. It's a fabulous dish. We haven't tasted it yet, but from the look of it, you know, the magic of TV and being smart, go ahead and prepare some ahead of time. Is what I've done. And because uh, the soup, the, the chowder takes a while uh, to cook. It takes about 25, 30 minutes. And I don't have that kind of time on, on TV. Uh, but this is what the product looked like. I'm going to put it in a white bowl so you can see it, get a better view of it instead of being in this big pot. All the hearty vegetables that's in there and the spices. You can see the basil that's in there. Uh, the basil, the corn, the chickpeas, and the uh, zucchini, all those good things, the onions, tomatoes, you can see all those in there. And the uh, carrots are so tender, you can pretty much cut them with a spoon that you have there. So that, that, that's why, and this is what they call a chowder. Uh, some people can take this and change it to a seafood and vegetable chowder. If it was in the Northeast area, they probably would, or the Mediterranean area. They probably would take it and change it and make it their own, like they, like I always talk, talk about on there, making it your own. Even in the Louisiana area, they ever take spicy foods such as andouille sausage, any kind of sausage or any kind of spicy food and bump it up a little bit. They would. And matter of fact, speaking of, of that area, this is I guess last Tuesday was a uh, Fat Tuesday. So Mardi Gras week, and then we roll on down a few more weeks. It'll be Ash Friday before we know it. And we stare at Easter in the face and all that kind of great <laughs> stuff. The year's moving fast. But back to the chowder. Like I said, you can make it your own by adding different stuff to it. Uh, if you got family members, it, this is a great product for kids that won't eat their vegetables, or that adult that won't eat their vegetables. <laughs> you know, that person that's on the go. You know, if you got a lunch pail like they used to carry years ago, put that child in their, in their lunch pail, and you know, you got yourself a good meal, inexpensive, good meal. Uh, and it made life easy for you. You get all the things that you need to do your job, all that energy there. So it, it works. Um, I'm going to be the first to taste it on, on air. Like I said, I rarely eat food on air, and I thought I had me some cornbread back there in the kitchen. That ain't happening. Don't have it? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't have time for to cook some cornbread right now. But I'm going to go ahead and try it like this. All the tomatoes and carrots and good stuff. Mm. That's good. I'm not saying it because I did it. But that's good. Not as good as my friends when they first did it. And let me taste it. Almost as good. 
Yeah, that's, that's probably what it is. I didn't have a biscuit, and they had biscuits. Um, but for a diabetic also, speaking of healthy, this is healthy cooking with Chef Jeff. This here, low sodium, no sugar, low carbs because of the peas and the corn. Um, so it's a good soup for a diabetic. And you know, like I said, if you add seafood to it, it that makes it even better for them. There are, there are things that diabetics and people who want to lose weight or whatever, this will help them. Even if you got that nag and cough, that nag and cold, something like this can probably help you with that because of the product that's, that's in it. And basil is a good product, you know. If you got that cold or so throat, stuff like that, or that nag and cough, basil is a good, good product to help you with that. So are tomatoes. All right. Um, let me let you guys taste it. And before I, this will be right after the end of the show that we'll do that. Um, since the product is so good. It's a shame. It's a shame. All right. But as y'all can see also, we got a good little bar going on here. I'm quite sure y'all can hear that. And let it reduce some more and it'd be just like this. But for now, that's the end of today's show. Today's, today's uh, product was a uh, vegetable chowder and I hope you all enjoy it. I hope you use it. I hope you make it your own out there. Uh, do something different with it. And if you want your kids to eat something with vegetables again, this is a good way to do it. They can be something totally different to them. All right. Thank you.